All right, welcome everyone to uh, Base Electronics and Electricity. Uh, this is Voltage Explained and a, a few other really basic electronics uh, concepts. Uh, this was uh, prepared by me based on the uh, the Neats Volume 1, Chapter 1. This is for uh, any electronic technician in the uh, the U.S. Navy that's looking to study for their rating exam. It's also for anybody who just has a, an interest in you know, electricity or electronics that would like to, to learn a little bit more about it. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start talking about voltage. Um, you know, if, if we were going to measure something, how much an electrical charge something has, that, that would actually be uh, measured in a coulomb, which is uh, named after a French physicist that did a lot of work with electricity. But that, that's not really useful to us because, you know, how much of a charge something has uh, does, isn't nearly as important as how much of a charge it has relative to something else. And so that how much of a charge something has relative to something else is known as a voltage. And that's the, uh, the difference in potential. And that's really what's going to be important to us. So to explain, you know, basically what voltage is, I like to use the uh, this analogy right here of uh, having two tanks of water. And so uh, my tank over here on the, the left tank A has a, a lot of extra electrons in it. And tank B, while it does have some electrons in it, it doesn't have as many as what tank A has. And we also have a, a little hose and a, a valve in the middle there. So how do we measure the, the difference? Uh, we measure it in volts, and uh, we use kilovolts to mean something that's, you know, a thousand volts or some kind of very large number of volts, like twenty thousand volts or thirty thousand volts. Uh, we also use millivolts uh, to mean one thousandth of a volt. So if we're measuring a, a really small voltage, then we're going to measure that in millivolts. And so, uh, you know, one kilovolt equals a thousand volts, and one millivolt equals uh, one thousandth of a volt. So I have an interactive problem here. So uh, what does 2.1 kilovolts equal to in, uh, in volts? Now remember each uh, kilovolt is 1,000 volts. So we could go ahead and just times uh, 2.1 kilovolts times 1,000. Or you could just move the, uh, the decimal place over uh, three points there and uh, you would get 2,100 volts. So how do we make voltage? There's, uh, there's six different ways that you can make voltage. And uh, the first one you're probably familiar with when, uh, you know, shocking your friends. You, you rub your feet against the, uh, the ground, against the, uh, the rug while you're wearing socks. Then you touch your friend and make a little zap there. That's uh, friction creates that voltage there. Uh, you can also create voltage using pressure, uh, like using little crystals uh, pressed together. Uh, th that's known as uh, piezoelectricity. That's uh, pretty common in things like microphones and, and other applications like that where you have to generate a, a small voltage based off of a, uh, a pressure. Um, you can also generate voltage with heat by using uh, metals with different properties and uh, putting them together and heating them up. That's uh, most common used in uh, you know, temperature uh, measuring devices because uh, you can actually measure a, a much higher temperature than what you would be able to measure with uh, using a mercury-based thermometer. Uh, you can also generate voltage with light, uh, just like solar cells you, you've probably seen around somewhere on top of a building or somewhere. Uh, and then also with uh, chemical action, which would be things like batteries, stuff like that. Uh, you could also actually use a, a potato to, to create a, a small amount of voltage. Um, and then also the, the, the biggest source of voltage that we use uh, you know, in our daily life is uh, magnetism. And using magnetism, you can uh, both take mechanical energy and turn it into voltage where you can take, uh, you know, voltage and turn it into mechanical energy. So anything like the, uh, the ceiling fan in your house or the, uh, you know, the wind farms out, you know, on the hills, maybe nearby your house, they're you taking that, that wind energy and using uh, magnetism to convert it into an electrical voltage and then send that to your house to, to power your ceiling fan. So looking back at our analogy here, uh, so we, we've defined voltage as that difference in potential between uh, tank A and tank B. So now what's the rate that that voltage, you know, or that that uh, difference there equalizes or what's the, the rate at which the, the, the liquid flows from tank A into tank B? Uh, we know that as current and current is measured in amperes uh, or also we call it amps. Uh, one ampere is quite a bit. So typically we use uh, milliamps to measure amps. So another interactive problem here, we have uh, 300 milli or 350 milliamps. How many amps is that? Uh, we can do basically the reverse of what we did before with the, the kilovolts to, to volts because, you know, this is a, a smaller thing. So basically what we're going to do is uh, move that decimal place uh, over three positions to the left, and that will give us 0.35 amps. So we have, uh, you know, our voltage and our current. And now there's uh, one other really important part to this puzzle here, and that's the resistance. 
So that would be uh, symbolized by that little valve that's sitting there in the middle. That's uh, you know regulating basically what our, our current is. So our resistance is uh, measured in ohms. You also use the uh, the little omega symbol to uh, to represent it. Uh, the resistance of any material is uh, determined by the the physical structure of the material. So if you look at this uh, picture that we have down here at the bottom, we have uh, picture A and picture B. In picture A, the, the atoms are really close together. And uh, you know from that picture, you can see it's a really short trip for those electrons to jump from one atom to another atom and then onto the next one after that if, if they're just as close. And then in picture B, it's you know kind of a longer trip for those atoms. It's a little bit more difficult for those atoms to jump from, uh, or those the electrons to jump from one atom to the next. So other things that affect resistance would be the... Uh, the length of your, uh, you know, what whatever it is that it's traveling through. Like if you have a, a piece of wire, there's a, a really long piece of wire, then, you know, there, there's a lot more uh, basically friction inside of there for it to, you know, you could lose, uh, you know, the it could be turned into to heat over the, the course of that, uh, you know, that piece of wire and uh, you can lose voltage that way or basically just it increases the resistance. Um, also, the, the cross-sectional area of the uh you know the wire the conductor is uh gonna affect that if we look back at our uh you know our example here if you were to uh increase the size of that pipe in the middle then you would end up with a you know greater flow of uh, electricity from from one point to the next point and so that's basically saying the same thing as the, the cross-sectional area making that larger uh temperature is also going to affect it uh temperature can affect it differently depending on what the kind of material is uh, generally, um, most things have a, a positive uh, temperature coefficient, which means basically as you increase the temperature that you're going to uh, also increase the resistance. You know, conversely, you're going to decrease the temperature, then you'll decrease the resistance. Um, however, some materials like carbon actually have a, a what's known as a negative uh, temperature coefficient, which means that as you increase the temperature, it's actually going to decrease uh, the uh, resistance in that. And then we also have the uh, the conductance of the uh, the material itself, which is uh, you know not not really that important to us as as an electronics technician. You know, maybe if you're a uh, an engineer, you might be a little bit more worried about that. But we're going to go ahead and go on to uh, to Ohm's law, which is really what this is all leading up to. I want to show you how everything is uh, relative there. As you could see in that picture, with the uh, you know we have our, our two tanks of uh, liquid, and then the uh, the little valve and the the line in between it. Um, anything that you do there is going to affect the other things. If you increase the amount of liquid in uh, tank A, then that's going to basically make more pressure there. It's you know more voltage, so that that's going to uh, increase your current. Um, if you increase the resistance by uh, you know tightening down that valve and making it so that there's uh, less room for that water to go through, then you're going to have you know less current going in through there. Um, so basically, all these different things are uh, relative. Um, so we can use uh, Ohm's law, which uh, I learned it as E equals I times R. You, you could write out voltages either V or E, um, but basically know that all these things are uh, relative. So if you end up with, uh, you know, knowing what your, uh, what your voltage is and what your resistance is, then based on just those two things, then you can figure out what your current's going to be by uh, taking the, uh, the voltage and dividing it by the resistance. Uh, you know, also if you know what the current is, um, then you could find, you know, the, the voltage if you know, uh, you know, what the current and the, the resistance is by timesing the, the current by the resistance. And that'll give you uh, what the voltage is, which is uh, really useful if you're trying to figure out, you know, at, at a certain point in an electronic circuit, what should your voltage be? You can figure out based on what the, the current and the resistance should be. And then that, that'll give you uh, that. So that was a, a really basic introduction to, uh, to electricity there. Um, we'll cover, you know, more in depth stuff on, uh, in later lectures, but, uh, if you have any questions on that, go ahead and leave a comment and we'll try and uh, get your question answered and, uh, good luck on your exam and, you know, good luck on your endeavors there and, uh, you know, working with electronics.